What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Sharp Lights and the start of season six. New season, new lighting. What do you reckon? I kind of like the purple behind me, but let me know what you think in the comments. I can't wait to get stuck into some more crazy sharp content for you this season. There are so many video ideas that I want to explore. But some of you Sharp Bites viewers might have missed the release of the Sharp Bites merch store at the end of last season, which I'm modeling here. So make sure you go and check that out. I'll post a link for you in the description below. Big thanks to all of you that have purchased some merch so far. It means the absolute world to me that you're doing that, which is great. The Sharp Bites tote bags are absolutely flying off the shelves. Oh, also, if you're watching this video on a laptop or a computer, then you should be able to see the Sharp Bites merch store on the YouTube shelf directly below this video. So go and have a look at some of the products. But if you're watching on a mobile phone, sorry, you're not gonna be able to see it. Anyway, today we're gonna dive into a topic that so many of you have asked me about before on this channel. It's something that we seem to read about every year here in the UK, and that is, are there great whites in British waters? Now, there's a bunch of videos that you can watch on YouTube revolving around this topic, mostly from people like Islander Outdoors or Wildlife with Cookie. Go and check out their channels, by the way, if you're interested in adventure or wildlife videos. But today you're gonna get the opinion of a shark scientist and a marine biologist on this topic. And from someone who's lived for nearly 10 years in probably the most likely place that you would find a great white shark in the UK, and that's Cornwall. So in today's video, we're gonna have a look at whether it's even possible a white shark could live here in the UK. And later on in the video, we're gonna have a look at some pictures and video clips that claim to be great white shark sightings. All in all though, great white sharks in British waters seems to be a little bit of an enigma. Because to tell you the truth, I think the conditions here are just about right for them. Just. Great whites generally mooch around in a water temperature between 12 and 24 degrees Celsius. There's obviously a little bit of leeway with that one, so it's not going to be exact to 0.1 degree of a Celsius, but it's within that range-ish. Down here in Cornwall, the sea temperature ranges from around seven to 18 degrees Celsius. And that upper end of 18 degrees is usually in the summer months between kind of June and September. So you can see that at least for a section of the year, the water temperatures down here are just within the range of what great white sharks can tolerate. People often mention Scotland when they're talking about great white sharks, but I think the water temperatures up there just lean a little bit towards the cold side for great whites. You're talking maybe one or two months of the year where the water temperatures in Scotland are within that great white shark threshold. It's it's minimal. Saying that, Scotland is the location of probably one of the most credible great white shark sightings in the UK, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. So don't get me wrong, it's not impossible that great whites are up in Scotland, but I think the chances are pretty slim. I think when you're looking at water temperatures, your best bet is here in Cornwall, down in the southwest of England. So water temperatures are looking fairly okay for great white sharks. What about food? Well, the British Isles are home to a very large proportion of the world's population of grey seals, and their population around our coastline and sit somewhere around 180,000 individuals. Sounds like a lot, right? And yeah, that is a fair whack of seals, but most of those sea puppies live up in Scotland. And that's where I've just said it's probably a little bit too cold for white sharks for the vast majority of the year. Down here in Cornwall, we do have seals, but nowhere near as many as what Scotland has. Based on the research that I could find, the population of seals that we have down here in Cornwall is actually genetically distinct from any of the other populations of seals around our coastlines. And that number sits at around 5,000 individuals. That's 5,000 grey seals inhabiting the waters around Wales and the entire southwest of England. That's in this region that's circled here. 5,000 seals. When you think about how many hundreds of square miles that is, 5,000 seals isn't really that much. Now, admittedly, that data that I've just referred to there was from 2006, which is about 17 years ago, so it could have changed since then. Annoyingly, there was another study that was done in 2010 that was looking at grey seal populations around Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly, but for whatever reason, my academic login wouldn't work, so I couldn't access the paper bloody paywalls. I can see a little bit of the abstract of that paper though, and over a four day census period where they were looking for gray seals, they found 592. So that number of 5,000 seals for the entirety of the Southwest is probably still fairly accurate. Speaking from experience and living down here in Cornwall, I have seen seals a bunch of times, but we're talking maybe two or three individuals bobbing around in the waves, or maybe around 30 of them at a haul outside. It's not like we're overflowing with seals down here in Cornwall. I think it's important here to now compare that seal population for the southwest of England with other seal populations around the world where white sharks are present. So in South Africa, they boast a fur seal population of somewhere between 1.5 and 2 million individuals. Then along the east coast of North America and Canada, 450,000 gray seals. The west coast of America, that's 250,000 Californian sea lions. And then southern Australia, 
100,000 long nose fur seals. These are all places where great white sharks love to frequent, but you're talking about seal colonies that are in the hundreds of thousands. And here in Cornwall, we've got 5,000. It just seems a little bit too low for me. So there's no way we've got a seal population big enough down here in Cornwall to sustain a healthy population of great white sharks. But it doesn't mean that the occasional wayward traveling great white shark wouldn't be able to survive. 5,000 seals is plenty enough for one individual white shark to have a quick feed on before heading off out into the Atlantic. We also know that white sharks can go for a good while without eating because their digestive systems are relatively slow. For all we know, a white shark in our waters might not even need to feed while it's here. So looking at both of those factors, temperature and food, I would say it's possible but very, very unlikely. Although there's a third factor that we've got to throw in, and that is simply their global scarcity. White shark numbers around the world are likely nowhere near what they would have been a few thousand years ago. Before the invention of industrial fishing, there were probably huge populations of white sharks all around the world, including right here in the North Atlantic. That is presuming that water temperatures were of a viable threshold for white sharks a few thousand years ago. But the issue is their numbers have dwindled so much in this part of the Atlantic that to see one now would be incredibly rare. You've also got to think about dwindling fish stocks here as well. Younger white sharks do primarily feed on fish, so you've got to ask the question, is there enough fish for those young white sharks to feed on here? There would have been if we go back a few thousand years, but probably not now. So there's probably some of you out there right now that are going to bring up the recent resurgence of the Atlantic bluefin tuna population here in the southwest. But we're still talking about a fish there that is classified as near threatened on the IUCN red list for this region. Thankfully, the bluefin tuna population has been increasing for the last 10 years or so here in Cornwall but to my knowledge, no one who's been fishing for tuna has lost that catch to an opportunistic white shark. So I'm not really buying the whole bluefin tuna bringing in the white shark spiel, not without some evidence anyway. To this date, there has never been a confirmed great white shark sighting in UK waters. And I put emphasis on the word confirmed there. And that's because no one's been able to get a picture or a video that categorically proves it. The closest a white shark has come to the UK was back in 1977, when a female white shark was caught off La Rochelle in the Bay of Biscay. That's around 168 miles from Land's End in Cornwall. And knowing the impressive distances that great white sharks can travel, we're talking thousands and thousands of miles, 168 nautical miles doesn't actually seem that far. But that's the closest confirmed sighting that we've got, and that was nearly 50 years ago. There was some chatter from Osearch, which is that shark tagging organization that they were gonna come across here to British waters to try and prove white sharks were here. But that expedition was set for September 2022, and that was nearly seven months ago, and I've not seen anything on their socials to suggest that they're here doing research. So either they're keeping their cards very close to their chest, which would be pretty unusual for Osearch and very out of character, or they've decided it might not be worth their time. I'll let you decide on that one. Since that sighting in 1977 in the Bay of Biscay though, no one has managed to get a decent picture or a video of a white shark, but there have been loads of alleged sightings. You only have to open a newspaper here in the summer in England where you'll read some crazy story about someone who's managed to prove white sharks are in the UK. So I thought it'd be quite fun if I had a look at some of these alleged sightings and break them down for you. Up first, we've got photos like these two. These were the ones that I could find with a quick Google search, but I'm sure there's tons more out there. I'm pretty sure I see photos like this crop up every single year in the news with claims that they are massive great white shark fins. I actually did a little shark bite short about this second picture here so make sure you give that video a watch by clicking that link in the top right corner there. Anyway, these two pictures were taken right here in the UK, one in West Sussex in February 2022 and the other one in Porth Leven here in Cornwall in February 2023. Both in February separated a year apart. That's kind of spooky. But of course, these are not great white sharks, nor do I even think they're shark fins. These two photos are actually of bottling seals. So when seals go on long foraging trips, they need to rest every now and again. And they do this by floating at the surface and pointing their head up towards the sky. And occasionally at the right angle and with some poor lighting, they can silhouette themselves, making them look somewhat like a shark fin. There's loads of pictures online of seals doing this and looking like shark fins. And I think it's actually quite funny that they end up looking like that. If they were great white shark fins in those photos, you would probably also be able to see the caudal fin towards the back. And as you can see here, more often than not, when a white shark dorsal fin is that far out of the water, their caudal fin usually is as well. And you definitely can't see any caudal fins in either of those two pictures. Also, you have to think about the context of the photos as well. The chances of those people spotting a fin quickly slicing through the water and then rummaging around to try and get their phone out. And in the time that they've done that, the fin is still in the exact same place for them to be able to take the picture. Nah. 
Not for me. And it's because that fin is completely stationary that they've managed to get the picture. I always find it pretty telling that no one manages to get a video of this. It's always a photo. You'd think that if you saw a shark fin swimming around in the shallows, you would get a video of it, not a picture. And if they did manage to get a video, you would see that that fin isn't moving around and is completely stationary, revealing that it's not a fin after all. Okay, so next up, we've got this video here. So I'll just loop it a few times for you while we have a chat about it. So this video was taken back in 2012, about 200 meters from the shore on the Isle of Mull, and it shows a relatively large shark being filmed by some kayakers. Now, the video quality is incredibly poor, so it's actually really tough to make out some of the key features. And as well as that, we've got some proper choppy water, so it makes it quite hard to see what's going on below the surface. I know that Islander Outdoors did a video on this particular video, so I will post a link to that in the description below, and you can see what he has to say about it. Although, I think I'm disagreeing with him on this one. In his video, he does say that the apex of that fin looks a little bit too pointy to be a basking shark, which from that angle, I definitely agree with. But if we roll it on a little further and pause it, you can see a slightly better angle of that dorsal fin there just as it's going under the water and it looks nice and rounded to me, just like a basking shark. That paired with the white mouth under the water and the fact that they're in mull, which is probably the best place to see basking sharks in the summer, I'm almost certain that this is a basking shark. I've seen basking sharks and whale sharks move at that speed as well when they're spooked. They just thrash around and dive down really quickly. Nine times out of 10, they'll just glide straight past you, but occasionally when they're spooked, they can move at that speed. I've seen a whale shark do that and just obliterate a bamboo kayak in the process. So just because they're big and bulky doesn't mean they can't move quickly. So next up, we've got this one here, which was filmed by Nigel Hodge in Falmouth, where I live. I actually know Nigel pretty well, and he's a fisherman and has seen sharks in our waters here in Cornwall for over 30 years. I've not had a chance to speak to him about this specific video, so I don't know if he still reckons this is a great white shark, but again, I'm not convinced. The dorsal does look fairly pointed at the apex, admittedly, but the coloration is the main giveaway here. It's got the characteristic brown color that would suggest it's a basking shark. Interestingly here though, this is definitely a juvenile basking shark based on that size, which is awesome to see. I think one of the strangest things about this particular video though, was that when the article was written about it, some shark watchers, whatever that means, claimed that the shark in the the video was an oceanic white tip. <laughs> Can you honestly look at that video and tell me with a straight face that you think that shark is an oceanic white tip? <laughs> you know, the shark species that's got a giant white tip on its dorsal fin. <laughs> I think it shows you that with a lot of these alleged sightings, you get some random people that love weighing in with their opinion. Don't get me wrong, that's totally fine. Everyone is entitled to an opinion, but it's important to remember here that with a lot of these alleged sightings, some of the opinions that you are going to see are complete nonsense. <laughs> so this was another one that did the rounds in the media back in 2007. I'm sorry I can't get the original photo for you, but we've got a screen grab from the article that was written about it. And it sent the country into an absolute frenzy. <laughs> Kevin Keeble, who's a fisherman who lives in Newquay, which is in the north of Cornwall, sent this picture into the papers. As you can see, it's very obviously a photograph of a great white shark. And Kevin claimed that he had taken the picture just a few miles off the coast of Newquay. He came up with an elaborate story about how he'd taken the picture and exactly where he was was at the time. But people started to question the story further and Kevin decided he was going to go into hiding because he didn't want to get contacted by people trying to confirm the story. Anyway, he decided to fess up a few days later and admitted that he had actually taken the photograph of that particular white shark in South Africa while he was on holiday. What a funny guy. <laughs> It's a pretty weird thing to do when you think about it and how that might have affected the tourism industry of a town like Nuki, which heavily relies on its summer tourism. I think what it does show is that a lot of people in this country are desperate for it to be real. People love to be scared. They love the morbid. It's just a weird kink of human nature. On that debunking video that I did a couple of weeks ago about that bottling seal, the sheer volume of people that were convinced that that was a great white shark was insane. <laughs> Despite being provided with logical evidence to the contrary, people are longing for it to be true. Believe me when I say this, I'm a shark scientist. Of all the people in this country who would want there to be great white sharks in our waters, it's me. I honestly think it would be amazing. But I often feel that I'm going against the trend when I speak about this topic because there are so many people out there that really, really want this to be true. You all know me here on Shark Bites. We go with the science and on topics like this, we deal in evidence. And to this day, we've got no evidence, no photos, no videos, no teeth, no carcasses of seals washing up on the shore, nothing. So it means for the time being, white sharks in our waters will remain as unconfirmed. And if you're after the opinion of a shark scientist on this one, I'd tell you that it's entirely possible, but very, very unlikely. So we've had a look at some of the dodgy sightings today, but there are some sightings out there that are fairly credible. I mentioned to you earlier about a great white shark sighting in Scotland. And if you stick around to the end screen of this video, you'll be able to click on another Shark Bites episode where we look into the top 
five most credible great white shark sightings right here in the UK. But if you're a keen shark bites fan and you're watching this video on the day that it came out, you're gonna have to wait until next week to see it. Oh, I know it's a dick move, but I've got to keep you coming back for more, haven't I? But I will tell you this right now, there's a few sightings in that video that definitely made me raise my eyebrows and question a few things. So for you keen shark bites fans, that video is definitely worth the wait. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, then please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel by clicking that big red subscribe button below and that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.